Hi, my name is Ariana Jarrett. I'm here with my Your Tango coworker, Joanna Schroeder, or Truth Be Told. Joanna and I have worked together for about nine years, and we are very close. I think we're BFF. We're best friends. Never met in person before today. So let's go. Okay. How does your first impression of me differ from what you expected after knowing me so long online? Uh, no, you're exactly, I think, who I expect, oh. to be honest. Yeah, I don't think there's anything different. Uh -huh. I was worried maybe it wouldn't like, be a huggy like person or whatever, right. but yeah, totally fine. How does your first impression of me differ from what you expected after knowing me so long online? I think video chat. I, you're exactly as I expected because we see each other all the time in meetings. That's true. So like, yeah, you're exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to go back to working in an office after working remotely for so long? Why or why not? Okay. If I could have all of you guys like within 30 minutes of my home, yes. I would love to have all mm. of you, like this particular team that we have at your tango right now, I love. If I could have all of those people in an office close by, yes, I think it would be actually probably really good for me because I sit at home and I think about how messy the house is and it drives me bonkers. And then sometimes I add to the mess. And if I was at an office, I wouldn't add to the mess and I wouldn't think about the mess. Right. right. <laughs> it would really be peaceful for me and also being able to leave the work behind. That being said, like where I live in the middle of nowhere in the mountains, it would be so hard to go to an office like anyone else goes to, like in LA or Santa Monica or Burbank. It's just like too far of a drive and you lose so much of your life. Yeah. So we're really lucky. We go, we sit down. If one of my kids needs something at school or there's an emergency, I'm like, just there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. Or the dog. It's always the dog, oh, actually. The dogs. Have you ever wanted to go back to working in an office after working remotely for so long? Why mm -hmm. or why not? I have not wanted to okay. at all, even for a second. I've thought about it and I thought that maybe same kind of thing. Yeah. It'd be better maybe because I'd maybe have to be more disciplined, like have to work during those hours and it'd be a little bit harder to, yeah. harder to let myself around. wander on other things, you know? Yeah. But I also think that's something I need. I need to be able to come and go. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about both having ADHD, right? Like I need the ability to come and go from that environment. Yeah. And I don't want to have to get up and get dressed and put on makeup yeah. and put on clothing oh, the way I makeup. used to and all of that. Yeah, imagine if every day you had to put on makeup. The only thing I think would be good is, even though I think we're all really, I would consider everybody at your tango my friends, right? yeah. I really do. Yeah. But, and I think it might be good to have people to go lunch with and like that kind of oh, stuff socially yeah. too. But I'm also too lazy. Yeah. <laughs> so no. <laughs> How do you think our political and societal beliefs differ and in what ways are they the same? Well, you like Jordan Peterson <laughs> a lot. And I we find know. Jordan Peterson mildly interesting, but mostly problematic. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Politically, so this is the weird thing. It's like you and me, and then the aforementioned Sabrina, a lot of us really have something in common, which is we don't just agree to agree. Like we don't just buy into one party or one idea. Mm -hmm. And that makes us more similar than different. So even if you're like, no, I don't like the policy on such and such. And I do like the policy. It's, I always get where you're coming from. Yeah. It's not like, like we, that's how we're similar. The foundation of like the ethics and the beliefs are so, so, so similar. That's my best answer. Okay. <laughs> how do you think our political and societal beliefs differ? In what ways are we the same? Well, I know you would probably consider yourself a progressive. I'm assuming you would say. I don't, I don't know what I consider myself, but okay, yes. Okay. I definitely think I'm progressive, sure. I think you kind of fall along those lines, yeah. although I think that you are more independent-minded than most people, I think, who identify that way. Probably. Um, I think you probably don't necessarily know what my beliefs are because I don't identify with any particular like set format. Yeah. So I don't talk that way because yeah. I don't... The only thing I align with is I don't think that there should be parties like that way where it's like UCLA, USC, and it's, I'm yeah. just going to stick with my team no matter yeah. what. And I do think we're both yeah, like that in a lot of that ways. Yeah, it doesn't work. Um, it's like with the Jordan Peterson thing, right? Like I see that as actually a similarity that we have, not because of him personally, but I think we both have a really strong interest in people who are thinking about big questions. Yes and talking both in terms of like psychology and philosophy and mm -hmm. thinking about things the same way. So I think it's a similar interest. Yeah. And that's why I think I 
gotten you to admit that sometimes he has a good point about yeah. certain things, yeah. right? Um, and I just, I think we're both willing to have conversations. You're probably actually, honestly, a little more open to shifting your view than I probably am. To be true, I just don't talk about the fact that I haven't <laughs> taken the fire now. That's quite an admission. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely willing to be open to shifting my view. And I also am extremely confident in saying, no, I'm not going to shift my view on some things to people. Yeah. And that makes people mad yeah. because I won't tow a party line. And that has been, there are people who definitely want to purity test that. And it just, I can't say something. And I know you're the same way. You're not mm -hmm. going to say something just to appease the people that you want to appease. Right. Especially like when you don't know the answer. And I think one of the biggest problems is like, I think we agree on this too, is people think they know everything from having spent five minutes watching a video on YouTube and it's not good. Well, I think in general, people just think that they know everything about everything these yeah. days and there's not enough willingness to say, I don't know. And yeah. that's one of the things I appreciate when we have those conversations. That's Thank you. I'm very willing to admit that I'm a dumb dumb. Um, oh, I just answered that. So you okay. Answer. What is your favorite part about working at your tango? Oh, the people. I mean, that's pretty yeah. easy. Well, I mean, in general, I love working at your tango. And I'm not saying that because, because the CEOs in that house at the yeah. <laughs> point in time. But I think there is just such a genuinely sincere um, caring about everybody who works there. Mm -hmm. I think it's part of the, the culture and the people who are hired and the people who last. Yeah. Um, there's a real caring about each other. There's a real curiosity about the world and about each other. All yeah. of that. So yeah, we're totally totally agreed. Yeah. What is your favorite part about working for your tango? So I've always liked about your tango that like our CEO, Andrea Miller, like she set out to do what she wanted to do. Yeah. And she runs it the way she wants to run it. And it's overall like the best thing about it because she's not beholden to like corporate powers that want it to be something. Mm -hmm. And then that leads me to my next thing is like you said, innovation, we are always shifting. Ultimately the people who last here are people who have grit. And like my favorite people are gritty people who are like, it's like duct tape and super glue. Yeah. And like, if we have a problem, it's like, oh, traffic's going down. It's like everyone gets out their duct tape and their super glue and we're just like hacking things apart and sticking them back together. And I find that so interesting. I think I'd be bored anywhere else mm -hmm. because it's like, there's no higher ups that are making us toe the party line. It's more like, well, what do you want to do? Okay, let's try it. And if I want to try a headline that's weird, Sabrina's like, I mean, okay, if you have a good reason to try it, try it. Right. She doesn't want us to just be lazy, but it's like, oh, let's try it. Let's try this weird video idea. Let's try whatever. I love that because I would be so bored everywhere else. Yeah, for sure. Plus like, I think having Andrea and Sabrina in charge of us is they're both moms and they both get that like, if your kid needs you, mm -hmm. you're just gonna leave work and go to your kid. Absolutely. And that's like, that's not true everywhere. Yeah, yeah. What was the last time you felt like you disappointed people at work? Oh my God. Every day, mm -hmm. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm always like, think I'm not doing well enough. Mm -hmm. And you guys have all learned that I'll be like, well, somebody please tell me that I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. I just need someone to tell me I'm doing okay. Did I do this right? Is this going okay? I don't know why I'm so insecure about it. It's just, I think actually it's like, I've always been this way, but now I've learned to ask for what I want, which is a half <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> um, when people were disappointed in me. I am not the right person to ask that because I think people are always disappointed in me and I'm probably totally wrong. It probably had nothing. It was pro I think everyone was disappointed in me when I was so sick, when I kept getting sick. And I think in reality, everyone was like, no, you're sick, dummy. Mm -hmm. Like chill out. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm such a failure. I'm doing everything wrong. I'm so weak. And that's the internal monologue. Whereas if I actually disappointed somebody, I probably didn't know. <laughs> Like the real way I disappointed someone because I was so like wrapped up in the ways I thought I was. Right, Do you know right, what I'm saying? Right. Uh, that's a little like treatise on neurosis right there. Right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When was the last time you felt like you disappointed people at work? Uh, probably yesterday. Oh, well, I mean, I'm the same way, right? So oh, I yeah. think I'm disappointing everybody all the time because I think I'm not doing enough all the time or yeah. well enough all the time. Um, and I think that like right now, like there are multiple different projects that I'm working on oh, yeah. and 
I'm excited about all of them, but there's like one in particular that I'm working on a lot. And I feel like it's, it's definitely, I've allowed it because like hyper-focusing on it. Oh yeah. To pull me away from some of my more like mundane tasks that I have to get through. Yeah. And so every day I feel like, oh, I'm not taking care of that thing for that oh, person, you know, hard. kind of a thing. So I would, I probably feel that someone's disappointing me every day. Yeah. But I think that's why also people like you and me do achieve some success is because you are always trying to make sure that everything's good. Yeah. Our standards are really high for ourselves too. Yeah. But we were joking on the phone about, we were working on like a mock-up of something and I was like, just do it in black and white. And you were like, no, oh, yeah. I need a custom color and two different matching fonts. And I was like, just do it plain. And you were like, no, 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 not good enough. But then I didn't do all the different colors and fonts. Oh. But then I did add some other whole <laughs> thin dangled thing to it. So like, That's what happens. Yeah. It's like you have high standards. It's a good thing, but also like you're exhausted. Totally. Yeah. Okay. What piece of advice would you give me that would make me a better coworker? I'd be like, just answer my question. Oh. <laughs> okay, got it. Got Half it, the got time. It. I'm just thinking about that because of this like particular week, but it probably is something because I think you get very like, I have to take care of this and I have to take care of that. And yeah. to, because you're being responsible. Right, 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 right. right. And so you do 50 million things yeah. and I'll have this like one question like, yes. I need you to answer. And you're just waiting on And me. you'll be going through other things and I'll be like, but yes, this one thing, right? Yeah, and try to like that. pull you down. You can text <laughs> message me too. You can just be like, please answer my question. I do that with you with Hot Topics where I'm like, can you please go to Slack and answer my question? I think I started in Slack and then I did it in Instagram. I may have done it in TikTok too, <laughs> yeah. but I don't remember to be fair. Started in Slack. I didn't answer. She went to Instagram. <laughs> I didn't answer. <laughs> and you're like, here's a funny donkey. I'm like, but answer the question. Like, Thanks for the donkey. <laughs> anyway, what do you think I should do with that font? Oh right. right. What piece of advice would you give me that would make me a better coworker? I think like, I think what you already done the thing that I would have said, which was you used to get too in the weeds with people's political discussions. Oh yeah. It was, and I would too. Mm -hmm. We'd both stop. Like, mm -hmm. if I disagree about someone's political discussions, generally, I just don't say anything. I just separate It's down. not a good use of time. Yeah. So I would say that that would be the one thing I would say, like, too emotional about stuff that didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, it matters, but that doesn't matter to your work day. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't have any. Because we're perfect. That's so... We've already solved all of our that. problems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since we are Aries coworkers, in what ways do you think I am like our zodiac sign stereotype? Oh my God. Name the characteristics of Aries. You're all of them. Um, in all the good ways and all the bad ways. You're very driven. You're very independent minded. You have very strong opinions. That's all Aries, right? Not no. temperamental. You're not temperamental? Okay. <laughs> At all. Okay. okay. Uh, um, no, she's not temperamental at all. Um, passionate, yes. I think you have all those. Since we are Aries coworkers, in what ways do you think I am like our zodiac sign stereotype? Well, I think you're the same. It's interesting because you're a March Aries yeah. and I'm an April Aries. Yeah. Um, but I think it's very similar. You know, it's the fiery, passionate, driven, good at what you do like you always the best <laughs> except when we're tied right and um, except when we're tied yeah <laughs> and also like all of the aries like i'm the best but also everybody hates me yes right and um always worried it's like a leo if we were leos we would just know we were the best and always know we we're the best but because we're aries we know it but we doubt it i suspect i'm the best but i also <laughs> suspect i'm the worst yeah, yeah, that's a great way to say it. I feel confident, best. I'm also confident that I suck, so. Totally. That's yeah. very Aries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you describe me to new employees oh. so they knew what to expect about my personality? Okay. What I would say is, Ariana's just gonna tell it how it is. Mm -hmm. If she thinks you're not doing it right, she's gonna just tell you that. You never have to wonder if she's not telling you the truth about something. She's gonna just tell you and over slack it might seem harsh she's not trying to be harsh she's just explaining it i would appreciate that very much yeah. I think that's true yeah i think it is true and i don't think there's anything wrong with it it's just like our society's not set up to deal with women like that meanwhile mm -hmm. if it was like 
one of the the like if it was our our i don't know what role he's in peter like the boss of some other things and like if he was short and clipped and direct when something needed to get done everyone would be like what a leader mm -hmm. but with us they're like oh okay yeah bossy yeah yeah i think about that a lot yeah for sure how would you describe me to new employees so they knew what to expect about my personality um i would say that joanna is incredibly dedicated to her work and she also works part-time and tries to basically be doing a full-time job not that she's expected to but she expects that of herself yeah and so she's gonna feel pressed a lot to get a lot of things done so if she ever and she's also going to be worried that you like her i do worry <laughs> so sad and it's so, so but i don't mean that in a sex way no i but know she's gonna really be trying very sincerely to make sure that you're okay and yep. if you can let her know that you are yes that would really help her relax and then be her best help we need to you to, i'm just gonna clip that and send it to my family okay they all need to know that about me i'll write I'm them a busy, note i'm busy i'm trying hard and i just need to know that i'm okay right somebody tell me what benefit or perk do you wish our company offered that we don't have already? I love this question because this is how our question. I don't know. Designers, coffee delivery. Coffee delivery to your own house. Yeah, to the ranch. That'd be so awesome. I would love. Can I like make a note of this? Right now? <laughs> Just daily like coffee delivery. But like the Six delivery person morning. has to be hot. That'd be an added bonus with muscles. Probably. It should be that hot farrier on TikTok with the tattoos insane. and the muscles. They could so just deliver so he could, Yeah, he could come just do the shoeing. This is a, a farrier doing shoes. Just, you, know, you have to make your arms all bigger and tattoo me. You only have one tattoo there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have that answered. Okay. What benefit or perk do you wish our company offered that we don't already have? I feel like I should take this seriously because we've already identified the hot farrier. So the important stuff's out of the way. <laughs> Maybe like the the once yearly review, like a formal review. I feel like that's what I should say. I actually don't want a review. I don't want I don't anyone want to tell me anything bad. You're an Aries. It, <laughs> I want a review. <laughs> it should be like a review where you only say good stuff. Right, that would be good. That's what we need. Like once a year, sit down and tell me how great I'm doing. Right. Just formal. And then put it in my file. <laughs> I think we get that though. Yeah, I, I think know, we I get know. a lot of I ask for it. Videos. So. <laughs> How do you think our relationship would be different if we worked together in person? I think we would annoy each other because we're both lectures a whole lot. Yeah. But if we had separate offices where you could close the door, it would be fine. No, but I if think we had to true. share a cubicle, it'd be bad. Don't you think? Because it'd just be too much. Other people would be like, don't go over there. <laughs> okay. How do you think our relationship would be different if we worked together in person? I think it would be, not that it would be better or worse, because I feel like it's good, right? Yeah. Um, I think we would annoy each other. For sure. And I, part of that's because I think that like right now, like if we're talking and you're saying something and it's bugging me, I can just look at my phone and like do something else and like distract myself from being bugged. And if somebody's right. like in front of you in person, you can't, you, can't. you have yeah. to like be in there handling it, mm -hmm. right? So, um, I think that would make it a little bit. I feel harder. that way about everybody though that we work with. Like, That's why when I, they're being right. annoying, I'm just like. Yeah, like, if you're certainly not yeah. the most annoying person. Thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> for sure. But I also think it'd be fun because I feel like then we could actually go for a hike after work or something. But yes. probably it would be me asking you to go on hikes and you'd be like, no, I have I 50 can't. kids. Yeah, I have yeah. 50 kids. Okay. Um, okay, what is one thing about your past that would help people understand your personality more at work? Well, that's a really good question. That's hard. Oh, I mean, I definitely think that, um, I don't need to get into the whole thing, but like what I went through a few years ago with my custody situation, I had a custody situation. Um, I think my temper got, like I've gone back and I've looked at like my Facebook posts and things like that from before all of that happened. And I yeah. feel like I was a much lighter Oh. person in general yeah um and then i look at them shifting like right around that time period and i became much more harsh yeah and angry and i think it just gave me a little bit less patience across the board maybe yeah um so 
that would be something where I would maybe just say like that kind of like, I don't know, that maybe there's some part of me that's always a little bit distracted since then. Yeah. And a little bit less able to be chill about certain things. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now you're asking me. Uh, what is one thing about your past that would help people understand your personality more at work? Okay. Well, I don't have any secrets. So I feel like everyone understands it. Like I just right. lay it out. Like I'll be like, I'll talk about like past trauma and like going through like, you know, all the stuff that I've gone through to like come to terms with like the weird stuff of my childhood growing up, like very conservative religious town, very, um, like a lot of that purity culture, like shamey stuff mm -hmm. and like being a weird, like queer oddball, you know, like hornball <laughs> <laughs> in that kind of setting. Right. And that I'm very sensitive to people judging me because of that, because it was such a huge part of my youth. Mm -hmm. And also I'm, because I had such significant learning disabilities and didn't know, I'm very sensitive to people thinking I'm dumb. I never even knew that you had learning disabilities. Really? Well, I mean, I have ADHD, and I then I have the problem with auditory. I have, I'll just list them off. <laughs> <laughs> I have ADHD. Uh -huh. I have auditory memory problems. I have auditory uh -huh. processing problems, and then I have some problem with numbers, which is along the dyscalculia lines. That doesn't count as dyscal dyscalculia. It's like dyslexia, but for numbers. So if you, okay. if you're telling me, we need to be somewhere in two and a half hours. I don't, I won't know when it's been two and a half hours. <laughs> if it's like 1220, mm -hmm. I won't be able to figure out what two and a half hours is. And I thought that other people were like that. I didn't understand, like I can't read a regular clock. Like a clock with huh. arms. I can, but it takes a long time. I have to be like, okay. <laughs> that long arm is on the, the 10, but then one minute more, that's like, around it's so it's i thought everybody was i thought people were working real hard when they were looking at clocks <laughs> <laughs> and then i learned that other people are like oh it's 5 20 and i'm like what the frick i have to be like 5 10 15. <laughs> i see i never knew any of that really yeah well i feel really dumb because like very and then there's other mathematical things i can do really 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 fast in my head like i can figure out a tip like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but most of the time i feel like everyone's gonna figure out that i'm dumb because that was like, I was just so dumb in high school. Everyone was like, this is so, they were always like, hopefully she marries like a handsome rich guy because she got nothing. Which is bizarre because now I think I'm smart, but I'm afraid everyone thinks I'm dumb. What are three corporate jargon words that you hear a lot at work and that make you laugh or cringe? Oh my God. <laughs> there have been some really, really, really funny ones that I don't know what they mean. For a whole while, everyone was talking about flywheel. There was a flywheel. Oh yeah, there was a flywheel. Was it? Was time. that what it was? Which I think is a I workout, a like in West is. Hollywood. It's a workout with your arms. I don't know. I don't know. But then everyone was like, and then we're gonna throw it up the flywheel. How <laughs> <laughs> was used? I was like, what are these people talking about? Where is a fly? What flywheel? Right. Um, um, I don't know. Scalable. I actually like scalable. Now that I understand it for a while, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, scalable. I love our Andrea Miller so much, especially since she's here and she owns the company. Mm -hmm. But right now we're very much in the era of there's a lot of hurt and heartache. That's not corporate speak, but that is- Oh, I don't think I've heard that. We've, yeah. well, we used it on the podcast. And now I'm like, it's lost meaning to me because we've said it so, so much, which happens with everything. Mm -hmm. Anything you say too much, hurt and heartache right now, it's there's a lot of hurt and heartache in the world. We're trying to solve hurt and heartache. But I like that a lot better than flywheel because I do not, I still don't understand. It may not even have ever been flywheel. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are three corporate jargon words you hear a lot at work that make you laugh or cringe? <laughs> I always forget them in the, um, the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, I keep saying, I've been saying to Andrew Miller, our CEO, all week, the virtuous cycle thing. I've been using that one oh. a lot. Yeah, you're, yeah, okay. The virtuous cycle. Um, I don't think it's a corporate jargon word, but it's scrappy. I always scrappy is always the first one that comes to mind. That we're really oh, yeah. scrappy. We are scrappy. That's true. Yeah, we're gritty. Um, this is gonna kill me that I can't no, think of the other ones. So many. I feel like I'm like letting everybody down. But I know, there are there's there's, so many. I I love that we actually had a team bingo game. Yes. During our annual meeting, that it was allowed. Like it was pre-approved and allowed. Yeah. <laughs> by our fearless leader. <laughs> of for of the corporate, corporate jargon corporate words. Jargon. And I wish I could see. It. Oh, and you know what? Taxonomy was oh, one yeah. of the words on there 
and I proudly avoided saying it, even though that was what my entire presentation was about. And I never used the word the entire presentation just to not let anybody else beat me in. Oh my God. And in so while we, I was speaking. Okay. Taxonomy was a word where, um, I really thought it had to do with taxidermy until you built the taxonomy. That'd be gross. I know. Well, I was like, what's this have to do with anything? Oh, taxidermy. Can't wait to see where this goes. <laughs> there are going to be so many that come to mind later. I know. There's going to be a million. That's okay. Nice. What do you think you do better than anyone else at work? This is the best question for an Aries ever. What do you think you do better than anyone else? Um, check sources. What? Check sources. Check sources. Yes. One thousand yes, percent. I don't yeah. think that any of you. Yeah, okay. I would use a B word. <laughs> I don't think any of you okay. check your sources like I check my sources and then cite them and then make sure that it's back up and read your read the source. Yeah. To make sure you went back to the original source and that you understood it correctly. Okay. And I'm going to agree with that because I send my sources to you to see if they're good. That's and right. I think I'm better than most other people, but you're better than me at it. That's right. Like when I don't understand, I'll be like, I don't understand this methodology. It goes to you. And you're like, I'll explain it to you. Right. Or I'll just tell you if you're right or wrong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think you do better than anyone else at work? Maybe like seeing the nuance of arguments or situations. I think I'm pretty mm -hmm. good with nuance. I don't know if I do it better than anyone else. Like, I think it would be the opposite of being nuanced to say you're better at nuance mm -hmm. than anyone else. <laughs> that seems like a oxymoron, but I think I'm pretty good at seeing nuance. I think that's probably like what I'm good at. When was the last time you cried at work oh my or God. about work? Oh, explain. Oh my God, I cry about work all the time. But crying about your tango, I don't think I've cried about your tango in a long time. I got overwhelmed by my life just last night. I cried about just my life and all the things I have to do and all the people I have to like balance the needs of and all the things I'm behind on and like how filthy my house is. <laughs> I'm crying about my house all the time. <laughs> um, when was the last time you cried at work or about work? It was probably on the phone with Sabrina, which we should probably say Sabrina is our- Is our boss. Cause I've cried with her multiple times. Oh yeah, me too. When I don't feel understood. Cause you know what I mean? like. Yep. Like you, like I'm always worried people are mad at me. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people are mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> like if she's calling me. <laughs> but like what you said, right? Like my intention usually has been that I'm just like dealing with a lot of stuff. I'm trying yeah. to get something done. Like I just am trying to like communicate quickly and be there, but also be doing 50 million other different yeah. things. And I feel like I get judged for my tone, which I've said to her a lot of times, I've probably said to you, I don't hear it. So it's yeah. very hard for me to correct because I genuinely, like I'm, I cannot hear it myself. And I believe it, I believe it. Cause yeah. so many people tell me, I'm not yeah. disputing that I do it. Yeah. But I, I don't hear it, I wish I did so I could correct it more. Well, and that's and then, why I've learned with you, I'll say, it feels like you're mad at me. Yeah. Or are we fighting? <laughs> yeah. I'll say, are we fighting? <laughs> Yeah. Because I don't think you know, and I don't know how to read it because I always think everyone's mad at me. And I would tell you if yeah. we were. Right. And you do sometimes too. Like, I just don't agree or whatever. It's fine. Yeah. But, but yeah, that but don't But usually hard. I'm just um, in the middle of 50 million different things. Yeah. So it just comes off as short. Mm -hmm. Or I just, I'm just trying to give somebody a direction. Yeah. And I am not taking the time to do it. Like, I try to use exclamation points, yeah. you know, and like smiley faces. Yeah. Yeah. Emojis, like that kind yeah. of a thing. So. I'm assuming it was about that, but I just can't think of it. Yeah, it's very, exactly. very hard to feel misunderstood. That is one of my hardest things. Yeah. It's like almost a trigger yeah. for me to feel like if someone's misunderstanding me or they haven't given me the chance to explain or they misinterpret me as a human. Oh my God, that's the worst feeling. Yeah. It's like, oh, she's such a whatever. And I'm like, I'm not bad. Yeah. Okay. Which celebrity cartoon character or movie TV character do you think I am most like and why this is funny? Oh my gosh. I don't, why did Jessica Rabbit bob in my head and you're no, not like her at all? Of my, it's the no, boobs today, it's the boobs. I think. No, it's because I, I am. It's, I'm near, it's the blonde, mm -hmm. it's the um, what is Veronica I, Lake. It's my Sophia Loren-esque yeah. figure. <laughs> um, Dude, I will and take maybe, Jessica Rabbit all day, every day. What's the name of the um, girl character? What's the show? Oh my gosh. It's all the Marvel kids. Which show is it? My kids were so into it. I used to watch it all the time. Are Teen you Titans. gonna say Raven? Teen, because yes. that's what I was gonna say Raven. for you. I was no gonna way. say Raven from Teen Titans. Really? Oh my God. Yeah, that's so funny. And my kids always said I was like Raven. My kids would be uh -huh. like, oh, there's mom again. 
Huh. There's an episode where Cyborg says to Raven, like she, he's saying, Richard, he's like, can't you just smile? And she literally becomes a demon and envelops him. And my kids are like, that's just like mom. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, I don't know. She popped that's into my head. Like, Wait, so I'm going to say which celebrity cartoon character or movie TV character do you think I'm most like and why? I think you're most like Raven from Teen Titans Go. Because I envelop people and No, like... because Raven. <laughs> oh, there's so many things. But like, she's very ferocious. Uh -huh. But she's a good friend. She knows what she wants. She's serious, uh -huh. but likable. What's the last random thing that made you super <clears throat> happy at work? Oh, <clears throat> any time that we take five minutes and everyone just shoots the shit, that makes me happy. Like we shot the shit and we found out that Dane, who works for us, is six foot six. I was delighted. <laughs> I don't even care. I was just like, it doesn't even matter, but I love it. I'm like, oh my God, I learned a thing. That's funny. What's the last random thing that made you super happy at work? Um, when I figured out how to make answers work for the quiz that we're yes. working on. That was, God. like, I love, like, a puzzle falls into peace. It makes me really happy. That was so exciting when you figured it out, yeah. Like, or when we figured out what wasn't gonna work. Yeah. And it was like, this is why it's not working. Yeah. That was an amazing yeah. moment. Do you think we'd be friends if we met in real life instead of working together? I mean. I think that we would be friends if we actually started talking to each other. Yeah. But I just don't know our, our circles of life would ever have brought us because you're like celebrity friend person, I feel like. Oh my God. Yeah. And I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Ask me. Do you think we'd be friends if we had met in real life instead of working together? Yes. If we started talking to each other and we would have, because I talk to everybody. Okay, good. <laughs> we just don't get together with I them. just take people in. <laughs> like when I meet them, I, well, they immediately belong to me. Right. What are three qualities of mine that you admire most personally and professionally? Lay it on me. Um. Your hair has just been amazing lately. <laughs> I can't stop that's looking about your, your hair and cool. talking at your hair. So that's really shallow. Thank you. No, I, 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 I love it. Um, I mean this in like the best possible way and I hope it sounds like it. Your self-promotion is so good because no, for me, like there have been times when I've wanted to do more like yeah. promoting myself, like doing different stuff. Like when we used to do Facebook Lives. Oh yeah. Right? And I always feel so self conscious like, here's my video that I did. And I feel like it looks narcissistic if I try to oh. promote anything for myself. I was like that when I had a mediation practice, like everything like that, I feel very conscious of. And yeah. you're like, I have a book. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and it's so genuine and sincere. It doesn't come across the way that I think I would come across if I did it. And I admire that. Yeah, I had to learn that. A lot. Um, and. I don't know. I think they. I think you're a, a really great, you know, writer and an editor, truly. Thank and you. I admire your I'm writing and editing. That. What are three qualities of mine that you admire most personally, professionally? Okay, I love your organizational skills that you attack problems so in such funny. an organizational way. Okay, Organ organized way. Um, I like how you don't give a shit. I know you do. I like how it. I think genuinely in your heart of hearts, you don't give a shit if people don't like you, if you don't care if I don't what care they about, don't yeah. like you about, yeah. or if you don't care about them. Yeah, if you don't care. I like yeah. that. I worry about everybody. Um, and I admire at work, um, yeah, I like how high level your thinking is. You have high level thinking and high level problem solving abilities that I love because my mine are so, I'm so granular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's yeah, the last one. What has been the best part about meeting me in person? Uh, that we immediately start talking about bras <laughs> and we just jumped right into it. But you also did, but it just, we just got right into it. It was like, that's life. Yeah. You didn't tell me if I'm jaundiced yet. Cause I did ask you yesterday, I sent you a picture of myself and I said, am I jaundiced? Oh, <laughs> it was just yellow. the bad, bad lighting. Yeah, I, I feel yellow. See, we just you don't worry right about it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm okay. not worried about it. <laughs> What has been the best part about meeting me in person? Um, that I can stop being harassed by Wade. By Wade. <laughs> <laughs> about the fact that we haven't met in person, that we're there for not really friends. He doesn't believe that we're so friends now we're really because friends. of that. I wish he was here. He's going to see this. Oh, good. But yeah, so now I can say that we're really friends. Yeah. I'm so excited and to it's, take and that our hikes. Just very, I was like, oh, is it going to be weird? Sometimes it's not yeah. the same way it is normally when you meet in person. Well, and I was really tired when I first met you because we'd already recorded. So I was like zoned out, but now I'm awake again. So yeah, how fun. Yay. 
Thank you, Joanna, for joining me. This was really <laughs> fun to finally meet you in person and get to answer all these questions. And thank you for watching Truth Be Told. Subscribe for more.